In this episode, I get a little bit excitable. Oh, look at this light. Jeez. Oh, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> are you excited about that? Yeah. Oh, look at that one. Oh my God, this is, this is amazing. It's infuriating, I, I cannot deal. Oh, you piece of shit. Sunshine. Faffing about with a full memory card and then my battery died. Where's my mic? It's here. What a twat. That few minutes that I got was absolutely amazing. Last winter, I visited the west coast of Vancouver Island countless times in the hopes of catching some big waves. Well, things didn't really go according to plan. Oh, that is actually quite, that's quite beautiful actually. One of my favorite spots is looking towards what's, what's known as the Broken Group of Islands off in the south there. And these, oh, oh my God. I, I'm, I'm doing exactly the same thing as I did last time. I'm yabbering to the camera, but it's, it's rude of me not to look uh, directly at you. I can't just keep looking over there. Uh, but, ooh, ooh, that was, that was quite juicy. And today the waves are peaking at 6.7 meters. Basically to me, there's two ways to shoot waves. You can go handheld and hunt the waves and just zoom in and you've got total agility of movement. You can pretty much get anything that you see but often I find that the background isn't exactly what I'd like it to be. Oh, look at that one. So what I'm doing right now is I've just, I've got a preset composition that's just locked down with a specific background and I'm waiting for the wave to come into the frame. So I've got it stuck on a tripod. I've got all my settings dialed in. It's just a case of sitting here and riding that shutter waiting for the perfect moment. And the perfect moment always comes when I'm talking to you. I'll give this another five minutes here because on the other side of Amphitrite Point, on the right of the lighthouse, there's a couple of sea stacks there which are just really impressive sea stacks. They, they make a good image even on a calm day, but if I can get some backlit monster waves crashing against that sea stack, that, that could be a portfolio piece. So like I said, I'll give it five minutes and then I'll head over there because I, th I think I've got a couple of decent frames from this location. If I have, I'll show it you now. Well, they may not be monster waves, but I did capture a cavorting sea creature. And at first, I thought it was a whale tail because I've seen whales there before, but it's actually a frolicking sea lion. So we've come to the Wild Pacific Trail in Euclulet on the west coast of Vancouver Island. And the reason why I've come to this spot is because I actually know it quite well. And I shot a really nice shot, well, I say really nice, a decent shot of this very spot maybe 10 or 12 years ago, back when I didn't have a clue how to use a camera. And, and it's a shame because the conditions were a lot better than they are right now. The, the swells were huge. I had big waves and really cool light. But today, now that I know how to use a camera, the conditions aren't quite as good, but the light's quite nice. We're getting some very nice contrasty light, but the waves, they're not quite where I would like them to be. But the forecast said that round about 6 p.m., the waves will almost double in size. So we're gonna stick around. Downside is by that time, the, the clouds are gonna come back in with some, some rain, but there might be just that little window of opportunity where the weather shifts and the swells pick up, we might get that epic shot. So what I love about this location, the reason why I come here is these little islands and sea stacks in the background, I've got these trees that grow out of the top of them and they look really cool and interesting and cinematic. And of course these waves come crashing in right in front of that. And so my ideal, my goal is to try and get one of these waves coming in in front of that distant tree that you can see. There's that one lone tree coming out of that sea stack. And I want to time it so that a swell comes right in front just about central in the frame and that's going to be my composition i'll zoom into about 200 millimeter and try and fill the frame with that tree and hopefully a big wave crashing in front of it and if i'm lucky i'll get some birds flying in maybe a rainbow some storm clouds in the background light rays all that business that is the ideal we don't know we're just going to sit here for the next three freezing cold hours and try and get that shot 
Are you excited about that? Yeah? I'm already cold. Now there's a shocker. The West Coast is deceptively cold. The absence of ice and snow tricks you into thinking, that ah, it can't be that bad. It can. Yeah, whenever you're shooting in these conditions and there's a chance that your lens might get soaked or if you're going to get blasted by side light from the sun, it's always a good idea to put your lens hood on. Yeah, today I've got the waves that I didn't get two weeks ago, but that light is proving a bit elusive. Having said that, we've been here about 45 minutes and we have had a few really nice gaps. It's just that it didn't quite illuminate and give, con oh my God, and give contrast to the scene that I'm shooting over here because I'm, I'm fixated on that tree and these islands. And yes, there are prettier waves out here these disembodied separate waves that have no landscape behind them and I do love those but I've got plenty of those shots what I really don't have is this epic landscape with waves crashing all around it and that that is what I'm after birds beautiful contrast beautiful light that is what I'm waiting for so I framed up my shot and I'm waiting for that for that action and that light to come into the composition. It's pretty much like any other landscape picture you've ever taken but it's it's all about timing and so I'm just riding this shutter I've got high speed continuous burst I've got an aperture of f9 if that sun blasts out and it gets way brighter that's going to be good because that'll allow me to stop down to f16 which on this lens is extremely sharp and it gives me a bit more depth of field and, you know if with f9 some things are going to be a bit blurred Ideally, I want everything or, or most of it to be in focus. So I, I need that blast of light so I can stop down and get that perfect shot. Ooh, that was kind of nice. Ooh, we're getting it. It's coming. Ooh, we've even got little bits of blue in the sky there. So it might. Oh, right. It's time for me to stop gabbing and get on with my job and get some pictures. Oh, look at this light. Jeez. Oh, ho, 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 ho. It, it's happening. It's finally happening. I've got the waves that I wanted. I've got the light that I wanted. It's absolutely fantastic. It's all coming together. Oh my God, this is, this is amazing. What, what a difference a cloud makes. Like the, the contrast that I'm getting now. So now I've got waves that are crashing behind that tree and behind that island are now glowing with the hot, the hot sun. They're just illuminated where you couldn't see them before, they were just grey mush. Contrast makes everything more interesting and this is... Oh man, this is what I've waited for. I, actually, I've been waiting years. Oh, <laughs> I've been waiting years for this. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, I missed that one. all starting to come together. The conditions were perfect and I was having a ball until things started to go wrong. Ah, oh, buffer's full, won't take any pictures. It's making me wait 50 seconds before I can take another shot. It's infuriating, I, I cannot deal. I'm even shooting in crop mode. Oh my God, f hell, come on you piece of sh Sunshine. Oh, you piece of shit! Sunshine. While my camera was locked up, my battery was fading, and my memory card was suffering stretch marks during the best of the light. So, I just had a massive photo tantrum then because I wasted the, the most vital four minutes of the most exquisite light I've ever seen in this place it was consumed by me faffing about with a full memory card, and then my battery died. If you think there's a good chance that you might get good conditions or, or once in a lifetime conditions like this, spend the money and get the biggest, fastest memory card you can afford. I was actually going to do that today, but the electronics store didn't open until an hour after we needed to leave. So I was kind of forced. I, I, I had a feeling that this would happen, but it had to happen during that four minutes of exquisite light. And by the time I'd finished faffing about, and I'd put my memory card in and a new battery. 
It was over. What a twat. At least the waves were still blowing, even though I'd missed the best of the light. I had to hold out some hope that the light would come back now that my camera was refueled. But, I mean, for all my moaning, and you know me, I like to moan, um, look at that business over there. Got some gorgeous lights, some epic light rays. Where's my mic? It's here. And I, I can just see, just see a little gap. It's a slim chance, but it's a chance nonetheless that that sun might just pop down. And if it does, if we get that last blast of light from the side, illuminating all of these subjects, then I think, I think we might get some fantastic light and I might get the shot that I should have got 10 minutes ago. Light on the horizon kept teasing me with cheeky glimpses, but as the storm surged stronger, I was starting to lose all hope of capturing the shot, until in the very depths of my despair, a gap opened up and you can actually see the moment where the sun poked through the clouds and I was back in business. Spectacular equa. With the light restored, I was rejuvenated. I forgot the failed visits, the early mornings and the days of driving, all to witness this one perfect moment. I know that landscape photography vlogs should really always feature the photographers putting their camera on the tripod, so let's do it. Smooth. With the best of the light gone, I still had time to shoot one last frame, and what a belter. I think that is it for any chance of epic light on these rocks and, and the trees and the waves. But that few minutes that I got was absolutely amazing. It was totally worth the six hour drive. I, I don't mind, I'll, I'll do any amount of driving and I'll suffer the cold if I think there's a chance to get a shot. I mean, I'll, I'll moan about it the whole time, but I'll still do it and I'm quite happy to do it. As long as I think there's a chance I'll, I'll get a shot. So it's been an absolutely brilliant day here in Euclid on Vancouver Island. Got some beautiful wave shots. Now, if you want to see some absolutely tremendous, epic, ginormous, gargantuan wave shots, check out the F4 road trip project where myself, Adam Gibbs, Thomas Heaton and Nick Page went down to Washington and shot some absolute monster waves that make these look like, well, it looks like something that would happen in your bath. So if you enjoyed this video, if you got something out of it, whether you learned something or you got a chuckle out of it, please hit the old like button, maybe subscribe to this channel and post a comment. All right, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>